it is angle iron time. I made the first cut before cutting the camera on. And all I'm doing is this was cut off with a uh, torch. I'm just cleaning that up. So I've got to get the other end over here. Get that cut up. Then I will bevel those so there's no sharp edges. And then we'll figure out a way to attach it where we can pull the bend out um, once we get <clears throat> to that point where we can get it located on market where I need to remove the paint and where I need to remove the rest it's not going to have a continuous bead going all the way down both sides it's just going to have uh, about an inch or inch and a half weld in probably one two three four five places on each side so a total of ten weld beads of about an inch and a half onto the bucket and that will hold it in place then we will um, carefully burn off the galvanizing on the um, hooks that we're going to be putting on here wrong drawer there we're going to put a couple of those types of hooks and then one of these large ring hooks these are more for sliding a chain into them and this one like a rope or a strap or anything like that you'll be able to get that mounted so it looks like yeah that ought to work okay i want to use one of those instead because i can cut that loop off let's sand that down Hmm. Do I use that one? Or do I... Yeah, I'll have a much better welding. Much more area to weld than here. In fact, we can leave that ring on and just grind this flat so that it sits good right there. And I'll actually give two mounting points. One here and then one down there. Yeah, I think we'll use that one. And those two. Um, these are just painted. These are galvanized. So I do have to get rid of the galvanized. And we'll uh, grind a flat here. And we're going to leave the pin because if we look on uh, my loader, you'll see how I have the pins attached. So, yeah, that'll work okay. In fact, I can just go right there just like that. That'll be just fine. I'll take you out here and I'll show you how the zip loader's hooks are welded on so that you have a better idea and understanding of what I'm shooting for here. Now, the iron on this one is uh, channel, C-channel. But the angle iron will work just as well. But as you can see, I just I use pins to hold the chain, and then I can loop around and get a hold of the hooks. And having just three regular hooks along here, I have found that I do have to keep a uh, shackle and a wide mouth hook in play when moving certain things in fact i've got two of them here so uh no oh, i lost that powder pin i'm just gonna put i keep losing the <laughs> pin out of that so i'll just use a, a cotter pin to secure that but anyway that's where we're at the quick way is about to get a hook bar and serve two purposes it's going to reinforce the bucket Straighten out the whoops. You can see here where I heated it up last time and got it all squared away. And then he used it, and when he used it, it puckered again in a couple of different spots. So all that's happened is, is 
the bucket sides are compressed in which has caused that so we're going to force it back down and once we get it once we get that welded on it won't pop back up again because that's a beefy piece of angle iron. I think that's two and a half inch. Take a look here real quick. Yeah, two and a half inch angle iron. So, and it just turned out that piece of angle iron is going to fall about three eighths of an inch short on either side of being the full width so that worked out really well let's get this other end cut off i'll bring you guys back when i start clamping it down we try to pull this whoops out of it just by clamping it and like i say then we'll mark it where we need to clean the paint and then we'll run a flat disc on this where we're going to be welding and we'll get the sucker welded on there stay tuned now what a hot mess that is okay i've got it pulled down as far as i can pull it down but i am still experiencing gaps you see we've got a gap there and right there is where that uh, bevel point was so i may have to move that clamp and possibly that clamp try to get that thing a little tighter but this will give me a reference I know I need to clean the whole front edge uh, out to eh, three eighths of an inch all the way across and then on the back all I need to do is just mark here and then I'll have my reference point on where I need to clean we'll just use the old-fashioned Sanford king size permanent marker Gotta love that squeaky sound that you get out of these things. Get this corner marked here. I'm not going to at least take it loose, clean everything up, and then my second approach to get everything to line up, what I may do after I take this angle iron off is to use just the straps and try to pull some of those whoopses out of there. I do not have a spreader bar that I can use on the bucket to push, well, I guess I do. I have uh, pipe clamps that are reversible. Is there any of them over here? I think they're all out in the garage because I use them. Nope, there's two of them right there. On there. Yeah, there's two of them there. I may be able to use those to spread the bucket on the top, but I don't know how well these are welded. Let me feel in here. Yeah, it's got to weld all the way around. Uh, this isn't quite um quarter or eighth inch it's a little on the thin side we can see here where it's a little bit bowed out let's look at the other side yeah that side's bowed out too um i think that all that is is that that's not bowed out there it's just drawn in up here as we can see the uh kind of a bulge I don't know how well that shows up on camera let's look at this side there's probably a little bit of a bulge yeah there is there's a bulge over here on this side too so maybe it's a matter of pinching it instead of uh, spreading it pinch it where it's bulged out I think that's the answer all right we're gonna try that here real quick and and then we'll pop the straps and the clamps off and these can't twist clamps they are the bomb they are just they are fantastic they're expensive but 
I mean, that was a pawn shop price right there, 30 bucks. I didn't pay that, but that's, you know, what they were asking, so. But they are the bomb. They, they put down tons and tons of torque just by hand. Uh, and we can see these hands are, they're, they're trashed. <laughs> I've been hard at it. I've got to work between services. I've got to work on this stuff. Um, and the, I've put a lot of people off that don't need their service immediately. They just are going to need service soon. Um, and I'll have them come in in July. That gives me plenty of time. But my hopes are today is Friday, the 3rd of uh, June. My hopes are that by next weekend, um, we'll be able to get Sean out here so we can pick up all three tractors. That is the hope and the plan. So there, I have committed to it, Sean. I'm going to do my best to hammer all these little details out and uh, let's see here yeah okay yeah. let me get at it I'll show you guys progress okay with just three straps and block of wood under each strap at each pucker I have cinched it and pulled it down further than it needs to be but as you can see it's also pulling up the bottom so not opportune right there but um i think our best bet is just get everything cleaned up and get started on our welds and draw it down as we go uh, the only issue um that that's going to pose is let me grab this ruler here and show you is if i start welding we'll just go right here if i start welding here okay i have no guarantee that i'm going to lay right on that line see what i'm saying so what i'm going to have to do is tack here hopefully a sturdy enough tack that I can pull it down there and get a reference to where I can put a couple more tack welds and hold that angle iron in the correct position and then be able to release it from down there and let it go ahead and come back up and then as I'm welding and as I'm pulling it along I'll pull it down as I go, and as I do that, we should end up being square at the end where we need to be. So we're just going to do real short tack welds to start all the way down in our five different sections on the front and on the back. Then once we've got our tack welds in and we can take the straps off and everything is secure, I can go back over it and put in my inch and a half welds, five in the front, five in the back, and that should hold everything. So that's, I just wanted to show you guys where I might run into an issue if I just start tack welding on one end, and as I pull it down, you know, it's this way or it's that way. So uh, the plan is just to just take one of these straps and pull it down over here and just start tack welding it's not going to pull everything perfect as i go so as i go i'm also going to have to be grabbing straps and pulling it down straps seem to be the better answer than the cant twists um only because uh i can get a little bit more mechanical advantage with these straps so i'm going to change the battery in the camera and we've got to get things ready to weld by cleaning up both the angle iron and the bucket and we'll get started tacking here's a quick tip with any of your grinders they all or at least most of them have a tool take a zip tie and zip tie your tool 
to your cord. That way you've always got it and you always know where it's at. You're welcome. Okay, instead of going from this side to this side, I'm going to go from this side to this side because I have a longer spread here where the, the top edge of the bucket is straighter. So that's the route I'm going to go is from here down. And I'm only going to tack the back side right now. And I'll move it along and I'll tack it so that I can keep the position correct. Once I get the back tack down, then I can pull the front to the angle iron or pull the angle iron to the front. You see, we've still got this whoops and this whoops and one underneath that strap there. The one underneath the strap isn't too bad. I'm going to go ahead and put another clamp right beside that strap. using these V-blocks from my mill for holding round stock, but they work really, really well with these camp twist clamps. Get this another pinch. That's pulling it down really, really nice. It's giving me a good visual. I'll show you guys. It's giving me a good visual line right down. So I think I think we're gonna be okay. I think I was worried, over worried. All right, there we go. Uh, I'm gonna have to play with the settings on the welder because I'm dealing with 11 gauge steel and quarter inch steel. So I've got to find a happy medium where I'm not burning through the box, but where I am getting good adhesion to the angle iron. We've got all of our surfaces cleaned up. I'm going to get my welding helmet on. Make sure that it's ready to go. And I'll put my welding gloves on after we get into the big part of the welding. I know, safety first, right Zippo? Of course. Hey, give me a break, I'm wearing a helmet. 
Okay, so I'm ready. So if I'm ready, hopefully you guys are also ready. I'm gonna make sure that my line is speeding fine. Yep, it's doing all right. Slow though, let's speed it up a little bit. There we go. I always keep a set of side cuts or dikes on a magnet right on top of my welders just for trimming the tips. All right, here we go. I'm gonna get on this side. Pull the welder towards me a little bit. And I think we'll get the scooter out of the way. I'll be moving the welder a few times, I have a feeling. I don't know if you guys heard me or not. But anyway, here we go. Let's get a about a quarter inch tack weld down here. Okay, no clue. There it goes. tell you it might be a harbor freight welder but as long as your surfaces are clean it'll lay down a nice weld All right, we've got a good tack there we check the bottom we're not burning through I think our wire feed is okay we may have to speed it up just a little bit let's see just trying to think all right I'm going to Put another strap on and then another clamp. I'm going to move that far clamp over here and put another strap on over here. I'm just going to keep moving things down without letting loose of it and giving it a chance to move. So I'll bring you guys back when I get the backside tack weld, when I get the backside tack welded. And we'll see how we're looking on the front. Front's going to be a little trickier because I'm going to have to pull that material, that pull the bucket into the angle iron. So hang on for that.
All right. Now you guys saw the time lapse of welding. Now we're going to pop the last two clamps off. Uh, it went really, really well. To my surprise, um, everything just pulled right in. Didn't have any issues, and this little titanium welder does a really nice job. I can't take all the credit at all because I've got some dirty welds, but for the most part, had real good adhesion, good penetration on both the whoops on both the. Uh, 11 gauge bucket steel and the quarter inch angle iron steel. Get this off first. Super, super handy. I'd forgotten that I had that. Well, I did that twice, didn't I? You don't want to drop these. <laughs> oh well. Drop both of them. At least it's a matching set now, right? I'll get you guys in. Up close and personal here. And I'm going to go back through and make these welds a little longer. But as you can see, good penetration. This is the one that was dirty. You can see dirt effect of that weld. That one. I mean, they're just welds, right? And none of them popped. <clears throat> so everything's on there. And that's got the top edge of that bucket. Pretty darn straight. And it's a lot more rigid now. And after I took the strap off, the bow, you know, whatever, I was pinching the whole bucket, the bow came back out of it. So, I'm just going to finish up that part of the welding, and then I'll bring you guys back when we get ready to stick the hooks on. And I'll show you what I'm going to do to clean them up and flatten them out so that I've got uh, nice good welding surfaces for them. So, see you guys when these are ready. This is how I'm squaring off. The hooks. take a look at it. It's going to give us a nicer uh, welding surface. I still have to clear the galvanizing off of each side, but I figured the mill's here. It gives me that right angle. So let's take it over there and see how she fits on the angle iron. <clears throat> Oop, I'm going to end up knocking those things off again. Let's back this up a little bit. This is my table slash step stool slash shop bench. Here, just like that. 
welding. I'll be welding from the crown of the angle iron all the way down on both sides. And then a little bit in the back, just a little bit. And then Sean will be able to just drop his pin through a chain link and keep the chain with the bucket like I do with uh, mine if he wants to or he'll still have that pin as an option to uh, stick that down in there so and this one's going to go eh, roughly roughly there maybe four inches in and four inches in here and then in the center we'll do the uh, large loop yeah, that's the way we're going to do it. This one. That one right there. And we don't need this safety spring in here, so I am going to grind that rivet off and get rid of that. Uh, otherwise, I won't be able to clamp it in the vise effective in the mill vise effectively. And then we'll mill a section right here. We'll leave that eyelet, so he's got that as an option to connect to. And we'll do the same thing. We'll just do a little shoulder here, just like we did on that hook. Just go right there. We'll be able to weld that one all the way down. So, I know that I use, 90% uh, of the time when I'm using my loader, I'm using hooks and chains. It's not often that I'm scooping stuff up in the bucket. Of course, I don't have a farm, so I don't have, you know, horse crap or cow pies or anything like that to take care of, but it just makes it so nice. Um, I have spread, oh, good Lord, thousands upon thousands of pounds of gravel with the loader already. And it seems that word spreads wide and fast when you get a loader, people want new driveways. <laughs> and I plan to do that with mine too at some point so we're dead battery again this is going to be a nice long one let me finish getting these milled and I'll get them welded on I'll finish up my welds here and then that will be done and we'll go through and uh, I'll just take some uh, international white and just bomb spray it just to keep anything from flash rusting but i think it turned out pretty good what do you think sean and again not looking at this weekend all right not the fourth and the fifth but the following weekend It'll be the second weekend of june that we should have everything done but this is the last little detail on the quickway loader so ends the quickway loader videos and we'll get on to the 7118, 7116, and get the little things done to that. Like that, put the correct throttle cable on the 7118. He took it somewhere, and they put this yank, janky push mower throttle cable on it. But that's a story for another video. I'll see you guys when it's completely done. All right. Well, I've still got a lengthen these welds or add on to these welds that I've got on here the 12 that are on there uh, yeah I went with six one two three four five six instead of five uh, more is better right we got the hooks on the welds look nice the other side must not have brushed that one off I may have got to brush your teeth There we go. And I welded on up on everything. Well, weld. It's nice to be able to weld and not have to grind, you know it. There we go. And it is quarter after 12. And I just got a text that my reading glasses are ready. So, I think I'm going to run to the eye doctor real quick, grab those, and make sure they did what they're supposed to do, which is 
put the blue blocker on it so I can use them at the computer. I only told them about 50 times, I'm sure they remembered. But, you know, stranger things have happened when you're more concerned about making the money than getting things right, you know what I mean? I'm the opposite. I'm more concerned about getting things right. So, okay, we are golden. I may, uh, these are all about an inch long a piece, except for that one. Um, I may just go between and do another inch weld. That way there's 12 welds on either side. I think that'll be just fine. It'll make it even more rigid. Yeah, we'll do that. But we'll do that when I get back from running to the eyeball dockers. I'll turn the camera back on when all the welding's done and when everything's painted. Speaking of painted, since I will be out, make sure that I have I've got uh, some international white. Should have. Yeah. There's some international white right here. Yep. And here's another one. There's more in that one. International Harvester White. That's what we're going to use. All right, golden. I'll see you guys once I get that top rail all painted up and pretty. And I'm getting Sean started with uh, a strap hook and a binder. He can get a hold of some chain. And I use pretty heavy chain on the center one. So I might suggest he does the same because I use the center one more than I use the outside ones. But uh, we'll be back when that's painted and then we'll wrap this video up. Okay, getting ready to paint. I gotta let these welds cool down, but we have welds about every four inches. 12 across the back, 12 across the front. And then of course the hooks are welded on. So I don't think we need to do any more welding. Everything pulled in good and tight. And these vice grip clamps came in real handy for getting in between the earlier welds and really pinch and step down so we've got all that done my dinner is in the oven I should say lunch for those of you who are not in Indiana <laughs> we call lunch dinner and dinner is supper so anyway um, and as soon as my watch goes off, I'll go in and chow down. But this will be cool enough, soon enough, that I can go ahead and get the first dusting of paint on it. And after I do that, I'll eat and then come back out and give it its second coat of paint. I may just go ahead and take this wire brush and aggravate the rest of the rust on that angle iron so that the paint will adhere. But we'll bring you guys back when this is totally and completely done and ready. Which shouldn't be too much longer. All we're doing now is just painting to protect and keep that stuff from resting. Um, the reason why you don't want to weld all the way across on front and back is uh, water can ingress into that. It needs a way to get out and water can definitely get out forward or backward because um, it's not super super tight and if I was to pour some water in there or spray it in you'll see it running out in between the welds uh, and also structurally you don't need a complete weld on something like this I think 24 inch or inch and a half welds is more than sufficient for what this loader is capable of which is 
I'm gonna guess around 350 pounds roughly in that uh, ballpark. These are awful, awful tiny little cylinders here. Uh, of course, the lifting cylinders are bigger, but at any rate, there we go. I'll see you guys back when that's all painted up. I just remembered I need to hang the weight box on the back of it. But beyond that, and my timer's done, and I've got paint all over my watch. It's all right, it'll come off. Um, looks like I'm trying to polish a turd, but only the leading edge of it, huh? But there it is, all painted up so it won't rust. The hook's on. Got my pins here to put back in, and the hook and binder. But other than dropping the weight box on it, which is still on the 7116, which is done, absolutely done. And that's just a couple of pins to mount that. So here we go. Say bye to the quick way. You'll see it in the background, probably for another couple or three videos but uh, yeah glad to have this one done I know Sean is too and did that little bit of extra for him here he's been waiting over a year so figured I'm just gonna be nice and do a little bit of extra work put the extra effort in so all right that's it Sean appreciate your patience Mr. Quickway, Mr. Sovereign, welcome to one another. I promise you guys I will see you when I see you.